In this lecture, we will prove an important inequality which is auxiliary, but it is very useful in proving some of the other important inequalities that we will consider in the next lecture. Those important inequalities will be used in proving the triangle inequality for some important metric spaces which will be studied in our upcoming lectures. Suppose P and Q be conjugate exponents, it means that the sum of the reciprocals is unity and suppose that P is greater than 1. Further suppose that alpha and beta be positive numbers, you have to prove that product of alpha beta is less than or equal to alpha raised to the power P divided by P plus beta power q divided by q this is very important inequality so let me start proof you are given that p and q are conjugate exponents it means that the sum of the reciprocals is unity so take the reciprocals of p and q that is 1 over p and 1 over q add them to make the sum and this sum has to be equal to unity that is 1. Simplify it, you will get P plus Q divide with PQ is equal to 1. Further simplify it, you will get P plus Q is equal to PQ and p is equal to pq minus q and in the next step you will get p is equal to take q as common between these two terms you will get q multiplied with p minus 1 and from this equation you get Q is equal to P divided with P minus 1. In the next step, you have to add minus 1 on both sides. Further simplify it, Q minus 1 is equal to p plus p minus 1 multiplied with minus 1 divided with p minus 1 this implies that q minus 1 is equal to if you will further simplify it you will get a 1 divided with p minus 1 so q minus 1 is equal to 1 divided with p minus 1 we will use this equation in the next process and the next step you have to define a function u which is the function of variable t such that u is equal to t raised to the power P minus 1 and mark it as equation number 1 this is very similar to if we define y is equal to f of x this would be y is equal to if we compare it with equation number 1 it would be for example x raised to some power some real power real number power for example for example y is equal to x square or y is equal to x cube next you have to make the graph of this equation for example the graph of x square will be like this one it is a sort of parabola
the part of this graph which is in second quadrant I have just used the dotted lines for this and if we make the graph of x cube it will be also a curve but it will bend more so you must be already familiar with these things the next thing that you have to do is to plot the equation number one so let me start making its graph since the independent variable t has a real power so it means that the graph of this equation is a curve like this one so this is the curve of the equation u is equal to t raised to the power p minus 1 the horizontal axis is independent variable that is t while the vertical axis is labeled with the dependent variable u next step is you have to take two positive numbers alpha and beta on these axes on t axis uh, let we take alpha at this point and on u axis we will take beta and next step is to find the area of this curve bounded above uh, t axis and for this we need the calculus you must be familiar with some of the uh, topics very important topics of calculus actually you must be familiar with calculus so in calculus you have learned that how to find of uh, find out the area of a function y is equal to f of x from point a to b on x-axis we know that the area for these specifications is the integral having limits from a to b f of x dx so the area under this curve above t axis from origin to point alpha is this one that I am shading with with these lines The next thing is to plot this equation that is you have to graph uh, this equation for this take two reference axes look out into the equation u is depending on t that is u is the depending variable and therefore it has to be labeled on y-axis that is the vertical axis similarly the horizontal axis will be labeled with the variable t which is independent next you have to take two points on these axis one point on a t axis is alpha and the second point is beta note that in the statement we have supposed that alpha and beta are positive numbers so therefore alpha will be marked on the positive t axis and beta will be marked on a positive u axis next you have to judge that 
how the graph of this equation looks alike for example if we set p is equal to 2 that is u is equal sorry p is equal to uh, 3 then we have u is equal to t square this is a, a form of a parabola for example y is equal to x square and the graph of this equation is a parabola this one as you know from calculus but since alpha and beta are positive it restricts us to the first quadrant therefore all parts uh, of the graph in other quadrants will be not considered therefore we will only consider this part of the graph similarly if uh, we take uh, the if we consider the graph of y is equal to x cube then it will be the uh, this one it will bend more and we will not consider its other parts lying in other quadrants it means that as we as long as we increase the power of x then the curve that we will obtain will bend more so it means that the graph of our equation y is equal to t raised to the power p minus 1 is also a curve and we will only consider the part of this curve lying in the first quadrant that is this one beta has to be taken a little below right here the next step is to find the area under this curve above t axis for this you have to draw a perpendicular from point t on this curve this one and you have to find out the area under this curve from point 0 to alpha that is from origin to alpha above the t axis and note that if this is the graph of a function y is equal to f of x and you have to find out the area under this curve from point o to a point a then this area will be the integral whose lower limit is 0 and upper limit is a integral of f of x differential of x this is the formula that you have learned uh, in um, basic calculus so apply this formula here you'll get this area is equal to let me shade it first we want to find out this shaded area this area is equal to the limit of integral from 0 lower limit is 0 and upper limit is alpha and the function is the graph of uh, the function is u is equal to t raised to the power p minus 1 this is the equation whose graph is plotted here so the function is t raised to the power p minus 1 and the differential of the independent variable dt so the shaded area is given by this formula 
next you have to find out the area of the same curve from 0 to beta above u axis uh, for this again consider the uh, graph of y is equal to f of x now you have to find the area bounded by this curve from point 0 to the point b and it is above the y axis for this all the first you have to look out uh, the configuration in this case the variable x is the dependent variable and y is now an independent variable therefore all the first you have to write uh, the dependent variable x in terms of the independent variable y for this you have to shift this function f on the other side or you have to apply the inverse of this function on both sides that is f inverse of y is equal to f inverse of f of x and we know that f inverse of f of x is equal to x so x is equal to f inverse of y now this curve represents the equation x is equal to f inverse of y if x is dependent variable and y is independent variable so if you want to find out this area that is uh, shaded here you have to write uh, the uh, variable x in terms of the variable y that is you have to reverse this equation so we will reverse the equation number one so from equation number one you have u raised to the power if you want to eliminate t you have to apply the power one divide with p minus one on both sides because it simply cancels this power p minus one with this p minus one so that we get u is equal to sorry t is equal to u raised to the power one divide with p minus one and since one divide with p minus one is equal to q minus one as we have already derived it so we have t is equal to u raised to the power q minus one this is the reversal of the equation number one so if you want to find out the area below uh, the curve given curve and from point 0 to B and above u axis then this area will be from 0 to beta the integral of now the function is u raised to the power q minus 1 and the differential of independent variable in this case the independent variable is y axis that is u axis so let me shade this area we have obtained two formulas for these areas in the next step uh, look out at this rectangle this one the length of this uh, integral sorry length of this rectangle is beta and the width is alpha this part is the width and this part is the length so the area of this and uh, this rectangle is length multiplied with width now we have three areas if we uh, add the two areas this one and this one if we add the first two areas then this area is bigger than the area of triangle by this amount it is clear from the figure so 
alpha beta is less than the sum of other two areas that is from 0 to alpha t raised to the power p minus 1 dt plus the second area 0 to beta u raised to the power q minus 1 du so you have to write here that it is clear from the figure that alpha beta is less than the sum of other two areas now you have to evaluate these integrals so by evaluating it apply the power formula p minus 1 plus 1 divided with p minus 1 plus 1 and the limits of integration are 0 to alpha same has to be done for the next integral u raised to the power q minus 1 plus 1 divided with uh, q minus 1 plus 1 limits of integration are 0 to beta so from this you have t raised to the power p divided with p limits of integration are 0 to alpha plus u raised to the power q divided with q limits of integration are 0 to beta and evaluate it apply the limits of integration you will get alpha raised to the power p minus 0 raised to the power p whole divided with p plus beta raised to the power q minus 0 raised to the power q divided with q and from this you get alpha raised to the power p divided with p plus beta raised to the power q divided with q this is uh, this is less than this is greater than alpha beta so alpha beta if you summarize it alpha beta is less than alpha raised to the power p divided with p plus beta raised to the power q divided with q and this is uh, not the required inequality there is uh, we need the equality mark uh, mark it as the inequality number any inequality in inequality a when alpha is equal to beta and these both are zero then if we put the values of alpha and beta equal to zero here then we get zero on both sides that is the equality holds this means that alpha beta is equal to alpha raised to the power p divided with p plus beta raised to the power q divided with q for alpha equal to beta equal to zero and mark it as equation number two combine the equation number one and two we get alpha beta is less than or equal to alpha raised to the power p divided with p plus beta raised to the power q divided with q this is your required inequality and i hope that you have uh, understood how to derive this inequality this is very important as it will be used in proving some other uh, important inequalities that we will consider in the next lecture so thanks for watching